is the rapture before or after the tribulation? The Bible says the rapture is before the tribulation. Matthew chapter 24 is the classic passage that talks about the tribulation. In just in case you missed it. Tribulation. Matthew chapter 24 is a classic. The Bible says the rapture is before the tribulation. The Bible says the rapture is before the tribulation. So, let's check that. Matthew 24. In verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. So there will be people getting saved during this time and this time during this time it'll be the days will be shortened now if that was not enough verse 29 immediately after the tribulation <clears throat> I don't know how people are missing this, really. Immediately after the tribulation, they shall gather together his elect. That's what people are referring to as the rapture. That's when we read in, uh, what is that, 1 Thessalonians uh, Four, verse 17 uh, it starts in verse 16 so let's go here for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven okay so this is um, right here then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven okay this parallels this for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord that's the rapture okay and that parallels verse 31 as angels with the great sound of a trumpet all right with the trump of God and they shall gather together his elect which is those of us that are saved that are born of the Spirit of God and that parallels we which are alive first the dead in Christ and then we which are alive caught up together with them in the clouds okay and this you've heard me teach this numerous times but when we are up in the air that is when the enemy is gathered down below at our feet and fire comes down from heaven and just devours them okay so I mean that's it right there this this right here immediately after the tribulation that should be a clue immediately after the tribulation the rapture before or after the tribulation the Bible says the rapture is before the tribulation it it literally says after immediately after the tribulation That's crazy, isn't it? And it's because of these strange doctrines that uh, people teach. They, they don't have any understanding. 
of the end time scenario. The end time scenario is so simple and it's told to us in many different ways but it said, always says the same thing that Jesus is coming in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up with him and the enemy at our feet is destroyed forever and then we are placed back down on the earth the new city, the holy city, the new Jerusalem and there will be no more pain, no more suffering no more sorrow, no more death um, so and let's let's do the in here. I'll tell you what. Let's let him talk a little bit. Tribulation. Matthew chapter 24 is a classic passage that talks about the tribulation in verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. So Matthew 24 is about the tribulation, but the Bible calls this a time period of wrath. It mentions in verse 16, <laughs> then let them which be in Time period of wrath. Oh, there is no mention of wrath. All right, so this is this is what happens is they confuse tribulation with wrath. In, in Judea, flee into the mountains. That matches with the book of Luke, chapter twenty-one. All right, we better go there. Matthew twenty-four, Mark thirteen, Luke twenty-one are all parallel chapters talking about the same event. Let's see where he's at here. <clears throat> then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things are written may be fulfilled. So this parallels... Uh, so, uh, what, when Jesus is referring to the abomination of desolation, this has to mean non-believers or unbelief. There's nothing more abominable or more desolate than unbelief in the Lord Jesus Christ, spoken of by the prophet Daniel. And that is a parallel when you shall see the uh, see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof, thereof is nigh. Armies are those that do not believe. I know this gets a little bit difficult for some. The abomination of desolation is not something that... Um, it's not a, based on imagination, it's very simple. The abomination of desolation is unbelief. It's not this great event that is going to happen that you that's never going to happen. All right, I guarantee you, all this means is unbelief. And that's what Jesus is talking about. Let him that readeth understand. The abomination of desolation is not having the Spirit of God. It doesn't get any more desolate than that. One, which says in verse 21, Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. But it says at verse 22, For these be the days of vengeance. It says in verse 23, Great wrath upon this people. In First Thessalonians, Woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, in wrath upon this people. <clears throat> now, is this the wrath of God? No, it's not. It's the wrath that comes from the enemy. Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath. We are not appointed. First Thessalonians five. So in here in this in the context of what Paul is speaking about, for God has not appointed us to wrath, that is the wrath of God to come. It's not talking about 
the wrath that we face from the enemy while on while in this world God has not appointed us to wrath but to attain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ and that's what this is referring to that we will be lifted up we just read in chapter 4 how we will be lifted up in the air with the Lord our enemy down below will suffer the wrath of God when fire comes down from heaven and devours them all that's the wrath of God and that's the wrath that Paul's speaking about here not appointed to wrath in the previous verse in 1 Thessalonians 5 we are raptured to heaven the tribulation yeah. is a time of wrath hence Christians cannot go through the tribulation the, the, wait a second what? The tribulation is a time of whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. God hath not appointed us to wrath. We are not appointed to wrath. In the previous verse in 1 Thessalonians 5, we are raptured to heaven. The tribulation is a time of wrath, hence Christians cannot go through the tribulation. Is the rapture Oops, okay. <clears throat> Jeez. That's terrible. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. In the world ye shall have tribulation, well, <laughs> that's what Jesus is talking about, is, is he not in Matthew 24? Five, we are raptured to heaven. The tribulation is a time of wrath, hence Christians cannot go through the tribulation. Christians cannot go through the tribulation, despite Jesus saying in the world you shall have tribulation. Alright, so the whole basis of this, and I've, I've tried to look at it from their viewpoint, that this is all talking about you know, when it talks about the tribulation, it's talking about the wrath of God. The problem is all this happens before this. Okay, and then, but that's not it. That's not the big thing. That's not the biggest problem here. For then shall be great tribulation, and except those days should be shortened, There should no flesh be saved. That that should be the clincher right there, because it's very clear. During this tribulation period, there will be people getting saved. All right, so I think that's enough. But clearly, yeah, I mean it literally says after the tribulation. But you know. You want to sell books, you want to make movies, you want to have produce TV series, then this idea that, um, you know, there's going to be a rapture and then followed by this tribulation period, uh, you know, it fits this idea of uh, what is that? Uh, I forget the name of that movie now where people just all of a sudden disappear and the, the problem is the idea lends itself that this idea is that after Jesus comes and we are lifted up that you'll get one more chance to be saved that's not true at all when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven that's it it's over game over you have no more opportunity be saved it is the end of the world so um, this idea that the tribulation is is the wrath of God it's look for one thing we we have evidence of this world right now if you could just look and see this world is full of wickedness and it's getting worse and worse every day and it's obvious. Uh, maybe not for young people, but old people like me, it's obvious. The world has just gotten worse 
and worse and worse and it's going to continue uh, it's not going to get better it's going to get worse before it gets better right so um, the, uh, the other idea is that well okay, the antichrist he's he's going to come during this tribulation time so we don't have to go through this time period with the Antichrist. The problem is that the Antichrist is here already. He's been here for a long time. And the Antichrist is the Pope in Rome. And he is the world leader. He reigns over the kings of the earth. Just like what we read in Revelation 17 and 18. He reigns over the kings of the earth. And we're not we're going through that right now we're not gonna get what's the point of pulling us out of this world and then having this long time period of uh, you know hey you got a second chance to be saved and people are gonna well we saw Jesus in the clouds we got video proof of it we got eyewitnesses up the yin yang and well now I'll believe okay well you could say right now there are people right now that will say I'm not gonna believe until I see that when I see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven and start pulling people out of the ground and off the ground and all that stuff then I'll believe let's look it's gonna be too late when that happens it's too late because it's the end of the world there's not going to be a second chance. It's not going to happen. And I don't know why this is so confusing for people. I think because it's this idea that, um, you know, we're going to see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven and we're going to be lifted up with him. The enemies down below are going to get destroyed. And then we're going to be set that back down on earth in a perfect world, a new world new heaven new new earth that idea just doesn't sound as confusing and fantastic as this idea of uh, you know UFO aliens of uh, you know uh, back to the future three type of world scenario where there's utter chaos and uh, you know just whatever your imagination uh, lends yourself lends you know whatever you can imagine right that idea is fantastic the truth is not as crazy and fantastic as this imagination if you will but you know I, you know in my opinion because this is true it makes it greater than any sort of you know sci-fi movie that you could ever make it's very simple very plain very powerful and we're gonna regardless or this is how we're gonna see it play out so anyways I just wanted to share that with you you know I like Gene Kim but very comforting, very comforting to know that we're not going to have tribulation in this world. Now, we are. Okay, no servant is greater than his master. Our master suffered. We're going to have to suffer in this world. This world is going to be getting worse and worse, and that's why it's all the more important preach the gospel and to tell the truth so that others might be saved. Okay. That's enough.